everyone. Welcome back to my kitchen. My name is Mindy Banks. I'm the Flip Flop Chef. Today I'm going to show you how to make lemon blueberry cookies using our deluxe stand mixer and you're going to love this. You're going to have to have this mixer and you're going to have to try this recipe. If this is your first video, please hit the subscribe button while you're here and also go to theflipflopchef.com. Click the button at the top of the page to join my recipe community. I'll have this recipe as well as thousands of others and at least one giveaway every single week. So let's go ahead and get started. If you haven't seen my other videos with the Deluxe Sand Mixer, be sure to go and watch those so that you know all about the features. But first we're gonna unlock um, the top and there's just a button here on the side to unlock that. And you see this just props up. I don't have to worry about it falling down. Now I store all of my parts to the mixer right here in the bowl. Now this is the pouring shield. It is sold separately, um, but that is a great product if you're cooking um, with um, making like a cake or cookies where you're adding flour in multiple additions. Such a great product. You're going to get this cooking guide. It comes with your mixer. There's a free copy of this in my recipe community. If you go to the flipflopchef.com, click that button at the top and then you'll look in the file section of that group and you'll be able to download this. It comes with lots of great recipes. In the bowl, I have my attachments. So we have our beater. This is the scraper paddle attachment and then we have our dough hook. So all of these come with your mixer. Now I have another product. This is sold separately but I love this and I wanted to make sure I showed you guys this. This is the medium lid to our stretch fit lid set and I love this because look at this. It is a perfect fit for this bowl. So if you're making something that needs to be refrigerated or covered, um, if there's any kind of resting or standing time, you can use this as a lid. Um, and it also has if a little um, steaming vent if you were to put this on something that is oven safe or microwave safe. Obviously this bowl is not an example for that, but it does have that steaming vent um, on the lid. And this comes as a set of three. So you get three lids that you can use on Pampered Chef products as well as other things that you have in your kitchen already. So I'm not going to use this today, so I'm just going to set it aside for now. But we're going to put all of our um, cake and cake mix ingredients, or excuse me, cookie ingredients in this bowl and we're going to be using the mixer paddle here, or scraper paddle. I, I'm having the hardest time remembering what they call all these attachments, so y'all bear with me. Um, we're going to take one box of lemon cake mix, so we're going to add that into our mixer bowl. Here are scissors here, open this up. We're going to have all of our cake ingredients and we're going to use a pre-programmed setting for all of this. So we've got our, our cake mix. We're going to add half a cup of vegetable oil, which I measured in our Easy Read measuring cup. We're going to pour that in here. And if you're new to my channel, I am a consultant with The Pampered Chef, and I would love the opportunity to help you get whatever products you need in your kitchen. So I do earn commission off of the products that I sell. So if you are looking for a consultant, I would love the opportunity to work with you and earn your business. I'll take great care of you. All right, we're going to add our eggs in here. You always want to crack your eggs in a separate bowl before you pour them in the mix. Um, very rarely have I encountered an egg that was not good, but it does happen. It actually happened to me not that long ago. So my mom taught me to do this and I want to make sure to do it right. <laughs> okay. And I also don't want to waste any of my ingredients. So we have all of our cookie ingredients here, the cake mix, the oil, and the eggs. Um, and I should have waited to put that on there. I'm going to block this in, put our beater on there close this and I'm gonna have to turn this so that I can actually um, see the display and you notice I wait to turn it on until I'm ready to use it because that's just a safety feature again something my mom taught me and um, I'm glad that she taught me all these things so I'm gonna cheat and look at my recipe we're gonna turn this to the mix setting which by the way I'm not sure if you can see this but it shows me a picture on the digital display of which attachment that I need to be using um, and so I'm gonna choose this and then I'm gonna lower whoops I didn't choose it did I so mix for 45 seconds. So I'm going to lower the time because it has a preset time. So 45 seconds. We're going to let that go. And you'll notice that it starts out slow and it's going to gradually increase the speed. So just hang tight and we're going to get everything else ready to go here to get these in the oven. I did preheat the oven to 350 degrees. So that's ready and waiting for us. And we're also going to make our icing while these are baking up. So it's still on speed one. So it should speed up here in just a second. We're going to bake these on the half sheet pan. 
which I also wanted to point out this cooling rack. It's also a baking rack, and you can actually buy these two things as a set together. So the um, half sheet pan and the cooling rack for, um, or excuse me, baking rack, which can also be used as a cooling rack, which we're gonna use to um, cool our cookies. So, all right, so we got our cookie batter already baked. Let me cut this off, almost forgot. And grab one of my scrapers couple of things left on the beater and I'm gonna have to wash this in a second because we're gonna use that again for our icing. All right, so I got a little bit of cookie batter on the side, so I'm just gonna scrape that down into the bowl so that I have a nice big bunch of cookie dough to scoop out of. So I'm gonna be using Camper Chef's Extra Large Scoop. This is actually a quarter of a cup, um, which is four tablespoons. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scoop this out. We're gonna put these on the half sheet pan. And we'll bake these for about 13 to 15 minutes. I think I put that one too far apart. Let me slide that little guy over a little bit. And while these bake, we will make our icing, which is going to be delicious because the icing uses homemade blueberry jam, which I made in my deluxe cooking blender. All right. I think that one might be a little smaller, but that's okay. All right, so I'm going to put these in for 13 minutes. Hang tight. I'll be right back. Grab a timer. Hopefully it's hiding in here. There it is. I need to put this on my fridge. Whoops. I have too many spices in my cabinets. All right, timer one. We're gonna do 13 minutes, press go. I love this timer because you can actually set up to four timers at once. So, all right, let me wash up my paddle scraper because we're gonna use it, but I do have a clean bowl that we can use for our icing. Now, this icing is gonna blow you guys away. It's super cool, super quick, and amazing. And you can get really creative with the flavors. Let's get this cleaned off real quick. I gotta order a second patter, a paddle scraper so that I have another one for when I do videos. Makes things go a little bit faster if I don't have to wash dishes along the way, right? All right, so get that all dry. We do sell replacement parts, so you can get an extra bowl, you can get extra beaters, whatever it is that you need, we've got it for you. So I've got a clean bowl here. We're gonna add our um, icing ingredients. So we're gonna use a quarter cup, excuse me, a half a cup of blueberry jam, which I made yesterday in my deluxe cooking blender. So we're gonna do um, two scoops of that. I gotta wash this scoop too, I forgot I was gonna use it. So since this scoop is a quarter of a cup, Makes it real easy for me to measure that out. I'm just gonna do two scoops. So I have a half a cup of jam. So we're gonna add the blueberry jam. We're gonna add the butter. We've got some powdered sugar, some milk, and then we'll put this in on a pre-programmed setting. So let's do one of these and then another one. So two scoops, half a cup of homemade blueberry jam. And you can get creative with the flavors. You could use um, strawberry jam. You could use, um, oh my gosh, you could do anything. Raspberry, anything you like. There's also a really, really delicious peanut butter frosting recipe that is to die for. <laughs> All right, we're gonna add our stick of butter. I've got three tablespoons of milk that I measured in our Easy Read um, measuring cup. And then we're gonna put two cups, let me make sure I'm, I'm checking my recipe here. Yes, two cups of powdered sugar. And I'm gonna take a measuring cup here from my measuring cup set, and we're gonna just measure out two cups of powdered sugar. We'll use my leveler there. So there's one and Two. Okay. Slid back on. Oops, let's see. Okay. We're going to put this on here. I'm going to add my attachment. 
I'm gonna put the um, shield on here too so we don't have any powdered sugar flying around even though it's a slow mix, uh, a gradual mix, I still like to use it. Um, I'm gonna turn this on and we're gonna set this to the cream setting for two minutes. So cream, which shows the same attachment that we used before and we're gonna change the time to three minutes and we're going to press start. And what's gonna happen is again, it's gonna start out slow, it will gradually increase, but it, in it gets all of those ingredients really, really nice and incorporated. So again, we have the blackberry jam, we have a stick of softened butter, we have a little bit of milk, some powdered sugar, all that is going to come together really quickly and easily. Now, when we're ready to decorate these, I will come back on camera and um, you could use a spreader like this, like an icing spreader to just spread it over the top. But I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna use one of our um, decorating bags. We're gonna make the icing look really pretty on the top. So if you've ever been to Crumble Cookies, um, that's a great example of how we might wanna de decorate these, make them look fancy. So you heard that this kind of sped up. Um, so when, we're, when we decorate our cookies, we're also gonna put some of these limoncello flavored sugar sprinkles on the top. I'm hoping that they don't dissolve too quickly um, so that they'll stay looking really pretty. But we're gonna try that. Those are from McCormick, but I'll come back in a few minutes. This is kind of loud. Our um, cookies are baking, so I'll come back in just a little bit when the frosting is done and when the cookies have pulled off enough for us to decorate. So hang tight, I'll see you in a bit. All right, you guys, I am back and I am ready to decorate these cookies with you. So our icing is done. So let me show you what we've got here. I'm actually gonna just um, whip this real quick because it's been sitting here long enough for my cookies to finish cooling off. So let's just get this whipped fresh again. Okay, and pop this out. And you can see I didn't even need that pouring shield. And this went for three minutes, three minutes on that cream setting, this icing looks so good. So this is the first time I've made these cookies. So you guys, it takes a lot of willpower for me to not eat a hot cookie <laughs> when they are here. Um, so y'all should be really proud of me. All right, so we're gonna put that in here and I'm going to transfer this over to, let's see, the decorating bag. So here's our cookies, by the way. So I took these out um, of the oven and I used my mini serving spatula. I don't use the metal ones on here because I don't want to add any more scratches to my pans. Um, these do get scratched up by my family sometimes, but um, I was able to just pull these right up off of the pan while they were nice and warm and get them cooled off and I transferred them over to this cooling rack. I can't slide this because that trivet is in my way. All right, so let's get the icing transferred over to a decorating bag. Look at this beautiful purple icing. Oh, it matches my dress. I didn't even plan that. So um, <laughs> we're gonna use our decorating bag set. Now I use this little storage container. I'm not sure if we still have these available, but it's a replacement part for our rolling cookie cutter set that we don't sell anymore. So I like to use these containers for my um, skewers for the air fryer, the rotisserie spit, and also my decorating bags. So let's see. I'm trying to decide if I wanna use which size I want to use. Let's see. I think I'm going to use, I want the open, the open tip. So I have an open tip. I guess that's what you call it. It's just the solid. It's not a star. And that's for the larger bag. So let's do, let's do that. So that helps me make my decision. So what we'll do <clears throat> is I'm going to take a cup. I like to use a cup to keep this from I'm not an expert cake or cookie decorator by any stretch of the imagination. And so, oops, I don't, I'm not as talented in that department. So what I like to do is I just put this in a cup like this and it helps me fill this without making as much of a mess. So I just get a big turvis tub, turvis cup, <laughs> turvis tumbler. I don't know what I was trying to, st to start to say. It didn't come out right. Okay, all right, and then, we're gonna add our frosting into the bag. I'll see how this does with that really, really wide tip. And then if I need to change anything, I can certainly do that. This icing is um, super soft, so I'm not sure how it will hold its shape, but we'll see. Let's see, that's good enough for now. Lift this up. I'll put my cookies back in front. 
front of me here. And then, let's see, I'll get just enough air out of there. So let's see how well I can do this. So let's give this like a swirl. Yeah, I'm good with that. So we're gonna do, that one wasn't a very good circle. And I am so excited to try these. And if you are a cake or cookie decorator, um, I'll just slide this one over a little bit. You're gonna love these decorating bags because they are so easy to clean. If you've ever used the um, clear plastic decorating bags, they are such a pain to clean and they get like super crinkly. Um, these, I'm not even lying, you can take them and put them inside out and literally with just a little bit of soap on your hands, you can clean off all the grease. Look at that. Perfect. So we have these beautiful cookies. Like I said, I've got these limoncello flavored sugar um, sprinkles. I'm going to put some of these on the top and garnish those. And if you wanted to, um, you could even take a few blueberries. So we'll see that sugar might um, dissolve into that icing. So we'll just have to wait and see. But look at how pretty. So you can do it with the sprinkles, without the sprinkles. And I feel like using the decorator bag to put the icing on here helped so much because if you tried to use a spreader, they may not come out looking so pretty, but I think these look perfect. So I cannot wait to dive in and I'll finish decorating those off camera. But this recipe will be in my recipe community. You can find it by going to theflipflopchef.com. Click the button at the top of the page, join my recipe community, and you'll have access to this recipe, thousands of other recipes, and a giveaway at least once every single week. So I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye guys.